Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, another show on Zasse Photo. That's Christian Zasse. I am live here on HAPS. I'm live on Facebook and also on YouTube. It's wonderful to have you all around. Today comes a rather interesting topic. We're going to talk not about the eyes of an eagle. We're going to talk about the ears, which is rather unusual. It's rather unusual. Hi, I see all your comments here on on HAPS. It's wonderful. Hi, Isabel. Very nice to see you. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so much. I hope that all the comments will, will, will come in and that everything will work fine. I have not done this ever really to broadcast live this way. So I hope everything will come in. It's going to be a rather interesting topic. So I'm actually sitting here in my studio in Surrey. And um, next broadcast, I intend to be out on the field under incredibly difficult circumstances. I'm going to take all my equipment and show you some nests live, especially from ospreys and so on. I'm very excited about it. I'm getting fit already for these outside adventures I'll be carrying very heavy equipment around so it's incredibly exciting but anyway today's topic is very unusual very unusual we talk a lot about the sights of an eagle but what about their hearing well i have a surprise for you very little is known about the hearing we know a lot about the ability of human beings and their response we've all gone to tests and so on and we'll actually be doing some audio tests together. I want to know how well you can hear, and then we'll dive into the eagle world so it becomes a bit more clear what hearing is all about. It's very exciting. Okay, so let me start straight away and um, get, just get my screens. So first of all, I would like to show you, one second. Yeah, let's get this screen up. I would like to show you, let me get out of the way here, one second. Uh, there we go. That's much better. So, what does uh, where is uh, the ear of an eagle actually located? So, what you see there is about a one year old or a few months old juvenile eagle, right? And you can see where the ear. So, it's it's structured very different to our ears, as you can see. It's basically a hole, and the rest of the ear resembles our ears in the functionality. Of course, it's 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 different in many ways. Um, we'll talk about another function of the ear very briefly later, and that's about the balancing, which is very important. But I think you get the idea that's so you don't you usually see the ears of birds. They're very well hidden. So let's jump right into the topic. So how do actually how does the animal world actually do when it comes to hearing? How well do animals hear compared to our hearing? So I'd like to explore that with you. One second, I'm just going to put my other picture back on here and get back so I can see all your comments. Good that I'm back. Thank you. Hi, Zach, and hi, everyone. I see all your comments. They're coming through wonderful. The Samantha, Sonia, everyone, Jackie, Isabel, of course. Thank you very much for joining. By the way, Isabel has amazing insect uh, um, uh, 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 web webinars is just amazing. So look at her insects; they are really creepy crawlies. <laughs> Wonderful! She has a, an amazing way of doing it. So do follow her. Uh, you'll see her on Haps and many other channels. Really growing very fast. So an upcoming star, quite amazing. Hi, Amanda. I also see Amanda. That's very nice to see you. That is great. Uh, I didn't make any big announcements because I wasn't sure whether this would technically even work. So <laughs> I'm very happy actually to be back and do this now. So let's jump in into the in, into the hearing. So what I would like to show you first is a chart of let's just get me out of the way here again there we go oh, there we go. no i can stay here okay so let's talk a little bit about hearing and frequencies so let me start right at the basic as you know i'm a scientist i'm a physicist so i try not to get into too much technical jargon when i talk um, so we're talking about frequencies that's the vibrations per second. That's sound, right? You've all sat in an orchestra before, you've played an instrument, or you've seen the way instruments are played. Well, that's what these vibrations that we're talking about right now. 
So when we talk about the human being, first of all, the human being, uh, how is our own perception and how good is our hearing? Well, I would say it's sort of average in the animal. It's average, whatever that means. We hear from about 20 hertz, that's 20 cycles per second, all the way just below 20,000 hertz. That's quite high. I certainly can't do that. And I'm going to test my hearing together with you. And I want to see how far you can actually hear it. So, Hearing tests are always a bit annoying. I find them most annoying because our ears don't like this really. But let's have a look at the animal world. So we human beings, we human beings are right here. That's what I talked about. You see that sort of a purple line. So we go all the way. And this is a logarithmic scale. Sorry to bore you with scientific jargon. Logarithmic means it's not linear, right? If we stretch this, so it goes up by a factor of 10, 10 hertz. 100 hertz, 1000 hertz, 10,000 hertz, and then 100,000 hertz. We call this a logarithmic scale. They do that when you have very large scales and we sort of iron them out, like doing ironing to, to sort of make it more compact and all possible on one scale. Okay, so the human being goes all the way from 20 hertz to about 20,000 hertz. What about other animals? Well, let's take some pets, you know, typically the dog. You see, there's the dog. The dog, of course, we know these dog whistles, right? They go much, much further, way beyond what we can hear. So they're much better. The cat even performs a bit better. If you see there, there's the cat, right? The cat goes way into the 30, 40, 50, even 60,000 hertz. It's very high up. So they can hear very fine high notes that we can't hear. The mouse is rather interesting. The mouse is rather interesting, also incredibly sensitive. But what's interesting about the mouse is it hears sort of best when it's about 20 days old. And then as it grows older, just like we do, but the hearing actually on the high frequencies deteriorates rapidly. It's rather interesting, isn't it? Now, I always thought that the bat is the ultimate you know, they, they have these ultrasounds and they, 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 they can make their whole space or their visual space into acoustic space. They have this wonderful transformation, uh, in, incredible equipment that nature has invented for them. So they have these very high pitched sounds. I always thought that, that the bat is the king of hearing and, and using acoustics, but that's not the case. Where was the bat? I just had it one second. The bat is here. Yeah, little brown bat, all the way up to 115,000 hertz. That's a factor of five to six higher. That's, that's a lot more than we could, we can ever comprehend. So there's the bat, but it's not the winner. If you go to the beluga whale. So if you go into the oceans where the transmission of sound is very different to air and air the transmission is very slow, but in, 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 in the ocean, you have a very dense substance. So water transmits sound incredibly well. And here, the sound actually, so you see the beluga whale and then the dolphins right up to 150,000, the same as, as the porpoise, right up to 150,000 hertz. So that's incredible. So they even beat the bat. So curious, isn't it? And right at the bottom, which animals don't hear so well? The tuna, surprisingly poor, but it probably doesn't need it. Neither the chicken nor the uh, goldfish and so on. But that's just to give you an indication of sound. So let's first have some fun and play a little bit around with sound. So the way I'm going to do this is I want to get you a bit um, your, your, your mind a little bit into sound because we are so visual nowadays. Everything's about light, but nothing's about sound, but actually our ears and hearing is very remarkable. So I have what you call an online tone generator. I'm going to irritate you now <laughs> with different sounds. And we're going to look at the frequency response of this. And then I'm going to ask you some questions and see how you respond. And you will probably answer all the things that I'm going to tell you now about eagle hearing all by yourself. It's not going to be any surprise. So let's get going. I'm going to put this on now. So this here is what you call an online 
frequency response, right? So again, sorry about the technical jargon, but down there we have kilohertz, 1000 hertz, right? So you can see that is the breakdown of frequencies of my voice as we speak, right? So I go low, oh, yeah. Oh, horrible, isn't it? Yeah, I can't sing. But anyway, you, you, you get the message, right? So let's do this a little bit more sophisticated. I'm going to take my iPhone now and I'm going to play a note for you. And this is a very well-known note. Like, um, it's, it's, it gets a bit irritating. I'm going to be quiet now. And let's watch what happens. This is 440 hertz. 440 hertz is the so-called A. And you know that. A lot of you who play music know that A is... In Western culture, it's in Western culture, is the note that we have in the orchestra so that everybody is tuned, right? So that's the A. That's what they also often play in your, when, when they, you go to hearing test, 440 hertz, 440 cycles per second. Let's do it. One second. And now it's not playing. Wait a second. Or I'm deaf. <laughs> One second. Now my phone has stopped working. Just give me a sec. That's weird. You know, that's always like that. Just give me a sec to... <laughs> I had everything so well prepared. Ah, there we go. That's it. Okay, now watch. I'm going to be quiet. Okay, did you see that? It said 0 0.43. That's close enough to 440 hertz. So that is the A as we have it. And then in music, if you go one octave higher, okay? So I'm going to bore you a little bit with, with very fundamentals here. One octave is eight notes higher, right? That doubles the frequency. So let's just do that. I'm going to jump from 440 to 880 hertz now. Just think, let's play 440 first. And now I'll double it. Double again. Ah, horrible. So I'm sure you can still hear this. Okay, so we're now at 1,770 hertz. Now, let me quickly ask you a question before, before I continue. Where do you think our own hearing is most sensitive? Where is our hearing most sensitive? Put your answers into the um, and, and don't answer in numbers. Just tell me what our human ears are most sensitive to. And then we'll talk about the eagle and we'll talk about birds too. But where is our own hearing most sensitive? What is the most annoying sound that we hear? <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, I'll let you think about it and I'll continue the test. So I'm going to go on now with higher frequency so you get an idea what, what the scale's about. And... I would like to know my hearing stops somewhere around seven, eight, eight thousand hertz. So I'm going to go right up now. So um, I'm going to go right up and see if you can still hear this. It's going to get irritating now. Oh gosh. See that? I'm about 9,260 hertz. That's where I'm at the moment. I can just hear it. Just my, eye, my ears are not that good anymore. I'm going to go be beyond 10 now. And I hope that the microphone is good enough to pick this up this this unfortunately the scale will not pick it up anymore because i'm now um unfortunately this frequency generator only goes goes to 10 kilohertz but i'm going to just jump back now on my main screen so i can see your comments too and you tell me now if you are still hearing this here okay with if you if, you, if you're still if you're going scratch oh here here we have so what's the most annoying sound scratching on a board scratching on jeans uh high pitch whistle there's something that is more annoying than that oh maybe you're not going to agree with me but there's something that's more annoying what's the most annoying cry that we can possibly have that gets everybody everybody's attention right well it's a baby of course right it's a baby and <laughs> I know you're going to disagree with me now, but it's really, it can get so annoying. That's what it's meant to do, right? It's, it's, it's meant to be very annoying. And it's around 3000 Hertz. It's around 3000, right? Um, I won't play that to you now, but I think you see where I'm already going. 
So if we talk about eagles, where would their hearing then be most sensitive, right? Just let me know. <laughs> You're laughing. But it's really true. I mean, babies have an incredibly annoying cry. That's what they're meant to do. So let's get to the eagle now. Hi, Susan. Nice to see you. So let's let's get to the eagle then and 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 tell me my wife. Oh my goodness. Okay, we're gonna get here into really problems. Maybe your wife also has this 3000 hertz tone that annoys you like crazy, right? Hi, Richard. <laughs> So that's probably it. alarm clock. Yeah, alarm clock too, Jackie. Absolutely, absolutely. That's fine. <laughs> so anyway, let's um, <laughs> let's think now about the eagle. So um, I'm just going to go a little bit higher with the pitch now because I can't hear this anymore. If any of you hear this, you're good. I'm going to go up to about 12 kilohertz, and if your ears are good, you'll hear this. But Let's hear. Honestly, I hear nothing. Does anybody hear this? I hear nothing. I hear nothing. Does anybody of you? Okay, I'm going to switch it off because some of you are going to get annoyed. There. Did anyone hear this? I, uh, Zach can hear it. Well done, Zach. Okay, Zach. Great. So this means several things. A the iPhone is working well, B, the microphone is working well, ah, and, and someone hears a little bit. So for, for those young people or fit people like Zach who go to the gym and do all kinds of things, I'm going to go up higher in frequency now um, and see nothing. Well, I'm not surprised. I hear nothing either, but I'm going to go higher now to 15,000 hertz, and let's see if Zach can still hear this. I'm just curious. Okay, we're going to 15,000. Very high pitch, but it's really high. Okay, here we go. Now, just tell me if you hear this. Uh, this is way beyond me. Jackie, nothing. Well, that's like me. I hear it. Amanda, that's amazing. Okay, Amanda, listen, we're going to go to 15,000 now. And I want to hear if you see, hear this. I'm going to make it really loud because I hear absolutely nothing. Here we go. Anybody who can hear this? Oh my God, Zach is hearing 15 kilohertz. Okay, Zach, for you, my friend, I'm going to go up to the limits now. This is crazy. Okay, we're going to go up to 17,200. <laughs> uh, one more experiment for Zach. Okay, I think that's more than enough that's really getting difficult now it's getting really but i think you get the message right so we have a maximum of sensitivity around 3000 hertz i hear you captain jack i don't believe that you heard 18000 hertz uh, captain jack i don't believe it you hear me yes but you don't hear the sound <laughs> i'm going to go back to the 3000 hertz now where our own hearing is most sensitive let's go there okay Ah, irritating, right? That's irritating. So that's that's typically at the maximum of where a baby is. So let's go back and now let's talk about the eagle, right? Let's go back. And hi, bird lover. Let's go right back and go back to our frequency spectrum here. Uh, one second. Here we go. And now we are going to run this once more. One, two, one, two. So I'm going to play you now. Well, you guessed it, right? I'm going to play you an eagle, right? So where is the eagle most sensitive? I think that was fairly clear. Uh, let me just jump right back to my other screen. One second. So even without doing science or anything or, or so, I think it became fairly clear that the you, you saw somewhere around 2,200, 2,300. Yes, you hear that. And I hope you heard that. You could see that the eagle is quite sensitive in that range, right? So that's, that's really interesting, right? So this is exactly... Um, so we've learned a lot now. Um, 
and that's that if you if you look at the juvenile screaming that's also around that frequency so it's about 1000 hertz lower than our own sensitivity my cat is definitely annoyed yeah i'm sure <laughs> okay okay so let's let's go back now and um and and um let's look a little bit of what this scientific analysis has done so i'm going to jump jump uh, right back on the screen now and now that we've done all the tests and we've learned quite a lot here i'm going to show you something interesting now it's going to get a little bit scientific so the the um the paper that i'm referring to is called auditory performance in bald eagles and red tailed hawks a comparative studies of hearing in di diurnal raptors so this is fairly new this is from 2019 i was really surprised so the background of this study was to see how they could build some warning some 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 sound warning system for eagles to prevent them to going into wind turbines as you probably know the wind turbines have very low frequency sounds and they become quite a menace uh, in the migrationary paths for bald eagles so the idea of the study was to look more at their hearing and to see how well they hear so you'll be surprised how little has been done in this area i mean they have been general uh, they, they've looked in general at the at, at the hearing of of songbirds and many other things, but in general, very little and surprisingly little has been done when it comes to hearing. So I I anyway I read this article with great interest, and you won't be surprised at the results. I'll show you the results straight away from the study. Um, let me just one second. I've got so many. I'll go here, and this is very nicely done by the Raptor Center. So this gives the range where they can hear. One second, I'm just going to get my other window up uh, so I can see this right. Okay, so so the 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 result of this whole study. One second, I'm just going to get got so many windows open here. <laughs> I'll tell you that in a second. Okay, so what they did is they took the bald eagle and they took red tail. Uh, they took the red tail hawks and they looked at the frequency response. Also, how well it can hear between about two thousand hertz. Uh, between sorry, low frequencies uh, till about. Uh, seven to eight kilohertz. So that's quite a big range, right? And they found that the bald eagle, surprise, surprise, is most sensitive around 2000 hertz. That's exactly what I just confirmed with you in a very easy experiment. I just um, played you the sound and we looked at the frequency response and it was just around 2000 to 2500, 3000. So no big surprise here, right? And um, what was interesting here is they did this all for renewable energy to see how they could build some acoustic warning systems for eagles. And they had about nine bald eagles here, so rather few. And the range was from hatchlings, so very young eagles, all the way to adulthood. And they also had seven red-tailed hawks that they examined, right? So what they did is they, how, how do you even do an acoustic test with, uh, with, with eagles? How do you even even measure this and the answer to that is it's the same way as they do it with babies right when they test the hearing of babies they put electrodes on 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 the subject in this case the bald eagle and so and and also the uh, the red-tailed hawk now in order to keep it quiet they did do some they said the animals were anesthetized with isofluorine to eliminate muscle activity and thereby maintain a stable, quiet recording environment. So this was obviously done under veterinary supervision uh, very carefully and so on. So they did this on a small sample. I call this scientifically a small sample where you take about uh, seven to nine. And it was quite interesting. So they said the stimulus frequency was varied between 0 0.35 to 8 kilohertz. So that's the range, right? So very low, one and a half octave steps when uh, uh, studying bald eagles. And they cut it off around 10, 11 kilohertz to, to see what the response was. And it's quite amazing, actually, when you look at the result. Um, let's see if I can 
I can share this screen with you just one second. Uh, let me just get this back onto this screen here. Okay. I've got so many windows. It's not easy doing all this at once live, but I'm trying. I'm trying. Get this all done. Now, now of course, that won't work. Okay, one second. Ah, now it's, now it's stuck. One second. Why is it stuck? No, I can't get it. Wait a second. Just give me a second here. I'm just going to try it this way. Now, for some reason, it will not go to my other screen. Okay, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> never mind about that. So, um, the result, basically, they did some clicking and so on, and they found out that the, that the eagle hears very well until about um, until about seven or eight kilohertz, right? So that's the range that you see here, right? So you see about 300 to 8,000 8, hertz, which is not as good as our human uh, hearing is, but it's sufficiently good. What was interesting about the study is they found in a separate study something else when they were looking at wind turbines, and that has to do with, with, the, with the vision of, of the eagle. So when the eagle is looking downwards and flying towards the wind turbine, you have what you call lateral vision to or peripheral vision to. The peripheral vision is compromised when an eagle is looking down. In fact, there's a 30 degree uh, a black angle which they cannot see ahead. That's actually shockingly surprising. So when a eagle is looking downwards, and that's what nature did for that, to observe downwards, there's a 30 degree peripheral vision in front that it cannot see. So if it were flying, it would fly straight into wind turbine without realizing it because there's a certain blackout here. And that's where the, where, where, um, the incentive came from to do a more detailed study. They did the same for hawks, by the way. Uh, let me just see. Um, so for a, no, sorry, for a golden eagle. A golden eagle only has a six degree uh, obstruction, whilst uh, a bald eagle has about 28 degrees. That's quite significant, right? So uh, that certainly gave the incentive of, of doing the study. So let's just see. Uh, and and surprisingly, that's all. <laughs> that's basically all there is to it. And there's one other thing that I did want to show you very quickly, and that has to do with the with the other function of the ear. And that's something that is far more complex now than what I just talked about about in in very simple terms. And that has to do with the balance of the ear. There's the so-called semicircular canal, and you may have heard of that. That's our gyroscope that keeps us stable. In birds, this is very sophisticated. You may have seen this in chickens, how chickens or hummingbirds can keep their heads absolutely still whilst moving their bodies. The same goes for an eagle too. They can keep keep their bodies very still. It's very well known for the osprey too. When an osprey goes into diving, they can keep their heads absolutely still or they can spin in a, in a spiral fa uh, um, uh, fashion, but at the same time, their stability is very good. And what, what, uh, what, what, um, what one found out is that it's different to us human beings who only have, the, have this gyroscope of the stability built into our ears. It's different there because they have something in their lower back or where their bum is, they have something in their vertebra that also helps them stabilize. And that may that is just being examined and more things are coming out. And that I will dedicate a very separate uh, webinar to because that's quite an interesting subject, how birds actually manage to balance. Anyway, I think that's about enough. I just wanted to give you a quick overview about the hearing of Eagles, I hope you enjoyed that and um, it's lightened it up. So in future, I will be doing live broadcasts from the field again. I'm just going to go uh, get this, get myself back in here and out there. So I will definitely be doing some live broadcasts in the field. And this time it'll be 
in Kelowna, around the Kelowna area at the Okanagan. I'll be looking particularly this year about uh, on uh, at ospreys, which will be incredible. So I will be going with a very heavy rucksack and all my my equipment and I'll be trying to broadcast from nature to give you incredible sounds of ospreys in nature and I found uh, and it's quite a difficult hike there I found a place a location where I can almost look horizontally into the nest without of course disturbing the 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 ospreys but I'll be using my huge lens and I want to do some live broadcasting in the next weeks from there. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Mark. Thanks for that. Thank you. That's very kind. So that's what I'll be up to. So you'll be seeing more of me. And then I'll also be, for those of you who like astronomy, I'll also be doing much more in astronomy. I'm building up also in Kelowna at our summer house, which is absolutely magnificent. Um, we have very clear skies, and I'm going to show you something of the beautiful night sky too, uh, live, of course. And those are those are the things I'm going to be up to. So it's going to be a completely new Zasa photo, looking at different things outside Vancouver, more in nature. And I hope you'll join me on those. And it's not easy doing these things live, but that's the ultimate challenge for me. So anyway, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this and have a, have a wonderful weekend wherever you are. Uh, it's been a pleasure to see you all again and keep keep it up and uh, I'll be posting more eagle um, images of course as we go on. You've probably seen this marvelous nest in Wisconsin with four eaglets, right? That's absolutely wonderful. <laughs> four eaglets. Look on my page, you'll, 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 you'll see it there. Very rare. I think there have only been two other recordings in the United States where they have actually seen four eaglets. I'm sure they appear more often but they're not usually uh, available uh, to us. So we don't usually know about them. So very interesting, isn't it? Anyway, my friends, thanks. Thank you, everyone. I see Amanda here and all of you, Karen, Susan, Bonnie, Jackie, and Cheryl. Mark, of course, thank you very much. Thanks for being with me and have a, have a wonderful weekend. And um, I wish you all the best wherever you are. And in the next weeks, you'll see more of me again. Okay. Goodbye and all the best, my friend.